So in this last video for chapter nine, we're going to do a couple of examples and think about what happens in the short run, like we did in chapter six, and then how do we move from the short run change to the medium run natural level of output, natural rate of unemployment. And so first we're going to look at a fiscal consolidation. So that's either a decrease in government spending or an increase in taxes. Um, and second, we're going to look at uh, an increase in the price of oil. Um, and so this was obviously one of the things that was going on in the 1970s when the Phillips curve broke down. And so I think it helps us um, think about, you know, what happens when a key input price, uh, in this case oil, uh, goes up and how that affects the economy, both in the short run and then in the medium run. And so, you know, what we want to think about um, in terms of, you know, the medium run is basically uh, what happens in the short run in terms of the IS and LM curves, um, and then what happens to inflationary expectations uh, and how that affects the real interest rate. And so the real interest rate then will shift the LM curve uh, and get us back to our natural level of output. So here's our first example of a fiscal consolidation. So remember, fiscal consolidation is either a decrease in government spending or an increase in taxes that shifts our IS curve to the left. So we start here at point A. We get the fiscal consolidation. We get a shift in our IS curve um, to the left, to IS prime and we move from A to A prime. Now, one of the things to note in this example is that we're not assuming any change in monetary policy, okay? So just imagine the central bank's doing nothing. So output falls from YN to Y prime. Well, now we know that if we have a negative output gap, right? So output is lower than the natural rate of, or natural level of output, then inflation falls. And so that means we're here at A prime. And if inflation falls, that means inflation is lower, right? And remember, the real interest rate is the nominal interest rate minus inflation. Now inflation is lower, so the real interest rate is going to be lower. Um, and we move uh, along our new IS curve. So the key here is that the IS curve doesn't shift back. Um, we just move along our new IS curve to our new equilibrium. A double prime um, at the natural level of output. And I mean, the key with all of these sort of medium run questions is that, yes, we assume in the medium run that the economy pushes back to its natural level of output um, eventually. Um, as we saw in the last video with the Great Depression, that eventually could be a decade, especially if we end up in a deflationary spiral. So hopefully monetary policy you know, sort of kicks in and, you know, they might reduce the nominal interest rate here to get us back to a double prime faster. Um, but even if they don't, we think eventually in the medium run, whether that's three years, five years, 10 years, we will get back to the natural level of output. And we think that because the natural level of output really depends on, you know, things that are real, right? The number of workers we have, the amount of capital we have, the technology we have. I think the sort of maybe flaw in the model and the flaw in the argument is when we have something like the Great Depression, uh, where you know investment is lower for a long time, that means we're not investing in new capital, we're not investing in new technology, and that can uh, lengthen the amount of time that it takes in order to bring us back to that natural level of output. Um, and I think then the problem becomes, you know, you try to estimate that natural level of output or the natural rate of unemployment, and, you know, you end up with estimates that it goes down in long recessions. And that doesn't really make sense. I mean, it, I guess it depends on what you mean by the natural level of output, right? And it's like, okay, yeah, if you're not investing in capital and you're not investing in new technology, then yes, your natural rate of output is going to fall. But is that really natural? I think that's an uh, open question. All right, so now let's think about the effects of an increase in the price of oil. So as we said, you know, when OPEC was formed in the 1970s, we had both the formation of OPEC and then we had, you know, a couple of Arab-Israeli wars, which pushed the price of oil up. Um, and so this blue line is the nominal price of oil from 1970 to 2015. And the red line is the real price of oil, so adjusting for inflation. 
And you can see, you know, the price of oil in the late 70s was basically the same as it was when it spiked in that sort of 2007 uh, time period. Um, interestingly, I think, you know, it didn't cause a recession in 2007. And, and one of the main reasons for that is that we're not as dependent on oil uh, as we used to be in the 1970s. And it definitely did cause a recession uh, back here. Um, all right. So. If we think about sort of the brief history, so OPEC is, of course, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, um, and it acts as a cartel, right? And that cartel is able to not control the price of oil because not all oil producers are in OPEC, but able to influence the supply of oil and therefore the price of oil. Um, in the 2000s, the increase in price is really driven by demand, right? So as uh, countries, especially China and India, develop their demand for oil increases. Uh, that pushes up the price. Um, on the other hand, right, 2008, we have the financial crisis, a large drop in the demand for oil, and that's the fall in oil prices. Um, and then sort of afterwards, what's going on is we have an increase in the supply due to U.S. production um, and some uh, disagreements <laughs> within OPEC. Um, and also, of course, the problems within Venezuela um, causing a drop in, in oil prices. Okay, so let's think about what's going on. So we don't really have the price of oil in our model, right? We, we don't even have input prices in our model. So how are we going to model this? Well, one way we can do it is to just think of, all right, well, if the price of an important input goes up, we can kind of think of that as like an increase in the markup. But instead of that markup going to all producers equally, some of it's just going to the oil producers, right? Um, and so when that happens, we get a shift down in our price setting curve and we move along our wage setting curve and we get a lower real wage and a higher uh, natural rate of unemployment. Um, how do we translate that now into our uh, ISLM model? Um, well, okay, so if we start here at A, at the natural level of output, um, then we, what happens with the increase in the markup, we get increases in prices, that's a shift in our Phillips curve. And so the shift in the Phillips curve uh, is means higher inflation, right? And now what happens is uh, we have higher inflation, that leads to higher real interest rate. Um, and we end up moving from A prime to A double prime, and we have actually a lower natural level of output. And so remember I said uh, in the last video that the key for the medium run is that we always sort of go back to the natural rate of uh, unemployment and the natural level of output. That's true, but sometimes those can change because of something else, right? And we sort of think of uh, the change in the price of oil as one of those changes, um, we end up with higher unemployment and higher inflation. Um, and that was, you know, sort of the stagflation, right? Stagnation and, and inflation that became stagflation of the 1970s. So we end up here, we do get back to the natural level of output, but it's a new natural level of output. And so that's obviously one of the important things to think about is, all right, did something permanent change um, or you know, do we, you know, uh, get back to our original natural level of output? All right. And so, you know, we were just saying, why were the 2000s so different than the 1970s? Um, and really, this is sort of an estimate of the effect of a 100% increase in the price of oil. So a doubling of the price of oil on the CPI and on GDP. And really what was uh, happening, I think, is that we were much less dependent on oil. So we were less dependent on oil for energy. Um, we were less dependent on oil for transportation because our cars were more efficient. Um, and so you can see that the CPI response is lower, right? We get a 3% increase in inflation instead of a 5% increase in inflation. And the GDP response would be lower, you know, it'd be a minus 3% uh, hit instead of like a minus 8% hit. Um, they are, the, the book talks about other possible explanations. So uh, workers had worse bargaining power, so they couldn't demand increases to their nominal wages. 
Um, and inflation was more inflationary expectations, especially were more anchored by monetary policy. So after we after the Fed basically, you know, crushed the 1970s inflation by increasing interest rates in the early 80s, um, people said, OK, I don't we don't expect inflation to be uh, as high as it was again because the Fed's not going to allow it. So if we think about conclusions here, um, we have, you know, a shock to something in the short run, right? Shocks are always sort of short run phenomenon. Uh, and then we have to decide, OK, well, is that shock going to be you know, permanent um, and change the natural level of GDP and the natural rate of unemployment? Or is it going to be temporary and we're going to get back to our original natural rate of unemployment and natural level of output? Um, and so this is obviously important, right? We saw the fiscal consolidation was sort of temporary, whereas the increase in the price of oil was permanent. Although, of course, it wasn't really permanent. What did we do? Well, we used oil less, right? We said, okay, well, oil is, looks like it's going to be more expensive, so we should use less of it. So we increased our uh, cafe standards in terms of miles per gallon for cars. We used less of it for energy generation, um, and we just used less of it in the economy as a whole. Um, and so what we want to think about is, you know, we've got these output fluctuations in the short run, whether that's a, a recession where we end up with higher unemployment and lower GDP growth or an expansion where we end up with higher GDP growth and lower unemployment. But then the Phillips curve kind of pushes us back uh, in the medium run towards our natural level of output and our natural rate of unemployment. Um, and so how that happens, you know, we can refer to that as sort of the propagation mechanism and we can use our ISLM uh, PC model. So adding the Phillips curve to think about how we move from the short run to the medium run.